Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this talented and creative business leader who has become one of the nation's most respected restaurateurs, Kevin Bame. Hi, everybody. How are you? Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Ryan, faculty, parents, and most especially graduates. Um, I'm privileged and honored to address you on the occasion of your graduation from the Culinary Institute of America. And I want to start out by giving you some really good news. Uh, not a week goes by right now when I'm not either asked to contribute to an article that either speaks about the shortage of restaurant professionals or ways to improve the amount of pay and quality of work environment for chefs such as yourselves. So congratulations. You're a hot commodity. It's the golden age of chef-driven restaurants. Your income's going up and you all have jobs, which leads me to a big question for all of you. What are you all going to do with all this power and leverage? Well, I guess it depends on who you wanna be. For my money, trying to achieve greatness has the most rewards, but it's also the most difficult road to take. When I left school 24 years ago, I had very little power and leverage, but I had a semblance of a plan. And I think any journey starts there. The fact that you're graduating today shows you have some plan, but perhaps you need to take it a step further. I've probably interviewed a thousand chefs over the last 20 years. Of those 1,500 got a second conversation. Maybe 150 of those got a tasting with us. And of those 150, we have six chef partners. These are six people who had a plan and it was specific. Stephanie Izard wanted to work for John George. For Chris Pandell, it was Danielle Balut. For Lee Wolin, it was Ferran Adria and Daniel Hume. Mark Hellyer wanted to move to Tokyo and cook in three-star Michelin kitchens. Paul Verant wanted to learn everything he could about pickling and preservation and make that his individual style of cooking. Giuseppe Tintori wanted to move to the US and work with Charlie Trotter. These are all things they wanted from the start and they made them happen. So you have a plan and perhaps you've been lucky enough to get exactly that first job you wanted. Well, put your seatbelt on because this is where the hardest part of your road will begin. An uphill climb of hard work and commitment and sacrifice, it's these times that will not only build your character, but shape and sculpt your most important asset, your reputation. It's impossible to unring a bell, so if you don't wanna be the late lazy cook, don't be the late lazy cook. At some point in this journey, after the edu educational foundation's been laid, you will start to find your own voice. There are certain singers in the world whose voice you know instantly. The screech of Axl Rose, the glass breaking power of an Adele, the fury and anguish of a Kurt Cobain. My partner Rob and I have always looked for chefs who make, can make a similar statement with food. That if you blindfolded me, I could still tell you who cooked it. This is gonna require you to take chances, accept jobs based on their continuing education more than their salary, and to accept that you find, might find more failure than success in the beginning. A plan, some hard work, a voice, and the final piece, well, hopefully happiness. A big part of that is surrounding yourself by amazing people. One of my heroes, Rich Melman, says, you can't make a good deal with a bad person and a bad deal with a good person. It's important to work for quality individuals and companies. My favorite people in the world are restaurant people. The great ones are generous, teachers, artistic, kind, fun, driven, and a little bit weird. I like weird. I did an inventory of all my friends the other day. It turns out all of them are weird. Uh, <laughs> I want to tell you two stories, one that exemplifies being humble no matter what level you're at, and another that speaks to finding greatness in unusual places. Grant Ackett's the genius chef at Alinea and CIA grad has been our neighbor for a decade. Some years ago, just weeks after being named Gourmet's number one restaurant in America, a Texas man and his wife, man in full 10-gallon cowboy hat, dined at Alinea. Upon entering the table, the server explained there were two menus, one 12 course and the tour, the 24 course. He said, son, I heard you were the best restaurant in America. The best restaurant in America ought to be able to cook me the best damn steak in America. Bring me a steak. The server, politely, as he should have, let me speak with chef and see what I can do. He says, Chef Ackett, this guy says if we're the best restaurant in America, we ought to be able to cook the best steak in America. Chef Ackett said, the man has a point. Go to Sir La Table around the corner and buy me a copper presentation pan. He grabbed a whole loin of real Kobe, and 25 minutes later, the man had a very expensive and beautiful steak in front of him. He eats it and he calls the server over. Son, that was the best damn steak I ever had in my entire life. Now bring me the tour. 
They ate all 24 courses after that. <laughs> Grant could have easily said, that's not what we do here, or I think you're in the wrong restaurant. Instead, he was a gamer, he was hospitable, and he was humble. A great lesson for all of us. In 1997, I was traveling with a chef friend, and I stopped at a Wendy's in a small town. Upon entering, we were greeted by a hostess, which took me back a little bit. I'd never seen a hostess in a fast food restaurant before. She welcomed us to Wendy's with enthusiasm and a huge smile, and we walked to the counter to the order. The cashier told us about the new spicy chicken sandwich like he was giving us the special at a Michelin three-star restaurant. And then after ordering the super bar and a water, the super bar, that's before your time, but they used to have like a pasta bar at Wendy's. Um, the same woman who was hostessing and keeping the super bar immaculate came by and refilled my water with a pitcher. It was at this point I turned to my friend Scott and said, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> I'd eaten in many fast food restaurants before, but I'd never seen hospitality like this. I walked up to the counter and I said, I'd like to see the manager. Is there a problem, sir? No, I'd just like to speak to him. The manager entered, perfectly groomed, and I said, I have to tell you, this is the greatest fast food restaurant I've ever dined at in my entire life. And very confidently said, well, as you can see, sir, we're very proud of it. And on the wall, they were the number one Wendy's in the United States. I tell this story at the opening of every restaurant. There are numerous lessons. But for the graduates here today, the biggest lesson is that greatness can be found in many forms in many different places. You'll all take different paths. It doesn't matter if you're a chef at a three-star Michelin restaurant, a food scientist, a caterer, a restaurateur working on a cruise ship, or eventually working at a prestigious culinary school like the CIA. The opportunity for greatness always exists. I asked our chef partners and one of our pastry chefs for one piece of advice for all of you. Mark Hellyer from Momotaro said, be patient and take the time to build a sound foundation. With a sound foundation comes creativity and with that your identity as a chef. Lee Wollen from Boca said, cook the type of food that makes you happy, not the type of food that you see other chefs being famous for. If you chase others, you'll never be happy. Meg Gallus, pastry chef at Boca, Momotaro and Swift and & Sons said, remember that at its core, what we do is feed people. That's a very humbling thing. Never get so wrapped up in what you are doing that you forget that it's all about the guest. Paul Verant, a perennial Verant V and Vistro said, cook what you love, learn how to cook the classics, take care of your team, you're only as good as your people. Stephanie Eisert of Girl and the Goat, Little Goat and Duck, Duck Goat said, please come to Chicago and cook. And then she, <laughs> then she said, just kidding. And she said, every chef in every kitchen is different. Work for a number of chefs you respect and admire and learn and relearn as much as you can before jumping into management roles. Everyone's always in a hurry to be a sous chef, me included. Just slow down and when the time comes, you'll be the most badass sous chef out there. Chris Pandela Belena said, find a mentor and follow them, then leave and do it again. Be humble no matter what, someone will always be better than you. Commit to what you start and success will come. Giuseppe Tintori of GT Fish and GT Prime said, stage in multiple kitchens before you decide where you wanna work. Learn the most you can, which will take a few years. Listen, don't argue, then find your style of cooking. In closing, what an honor it's been for me to speak to you all today. I'm excited for all your journeys. My last piece of advice for you is to drink aggressively tonight. And I can't tell you how much excitement and joy this world has brought me. I wish you the same. You guys are the architects of your lives. Design something beautiful. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs>